Hello everyone, welcome back. I know you will be anticipating the lecture on join operations. I feel understanding null values before join operations is truly beneficial and that is why we are here today. In today's lecture, let's focus on null values in RDBMS. Before we step into the topic of the day, Let's see an analogy that helps us to understand the importance of null values in RDBMS. Please assume this is me and I gonna register my profile to a website. If the registration form is asking for my name, in that case I will be obviously providing my name. And this name field which is shown in the registration form can be a mandatory field in the form because everyone will have their name. If the registration form asks for the spouse name, let's say I am talking about the registration form that is asking for the next field which is the spouse name. Here comes the problem. If I am a married person, obviously I will be having a spouse name. What if I am not a married person? So this field, I mean this spouse name field cannot be a mandatory field in the registration form. And coming to the next field, the gender field which is shown in the registration form, this can be a mandatory field because it may be either male or female or transgender. Coming to the next field, the salary field. And here comes another problem. This salary field cannot be mandatory because this is applicable only for people who are employed or they are entrepreneurs or if they have a regular income. Coming to the next field, the date of birth field. This field can be a mandatory field because everyone will have their date of birth and also the age. So in this form, if you keenly observe, there are two fields. For example, one, the spouse name field and number two, the salary field, which cannot be mandatory fields. However, the form that I am referring currently is designed in the front end programming language tools, maybe Java or .NET or Python or HTML or whatsoever. And all the data that are sent from the front end will be actually stored in the back end, obviously, which is going to be the table in the database. In the table, all these fields that we are referring to all will be the attributes or the columns, right? In that case, if a married person provides values, he or she will be providing the data for the spouse name. Similarly, if an employed person or an entrepreneur is filling the form, he will be providing some values for the salary field. So what I mean to say here is, what if an unmarried person is filling the form or a student who is not employed anywhere who is filling this form? Obviously, there cannot be a spouse name field. To be precise, the spouse name value will be empty in this case as well as salary will be empty in this case. Does that mean that blank or empty is the name of the spouse? No, it is certainly not. So what I mean to say here is, we should have a special value that represents either a missing value or a not applicable or not available value. And that is why we are here in today's presentation, which is the null values in DBMS. As I already told you, it is a special value in database management system. Remember, if a column or an attribute is accepting null values, it means it represents the values of attributes that are unknown, which is not known or not applicable, which is not appropriate for that person or missing. This is important when we talk about join operations. And that is why before join operations, I am dealing with the null values. All these values of that attributes are obviously for that particular row. So when a person is going to insert a row, in that row, if we find a null value, it means it may be unknown or not applicable or missing. And please remember, null values is neither blank nor zero. This is very important. So what does it mean? This null value can be an unknown value or a not applicable value or a missing value. And that's what I have meant. If the value is unknown, then null values can be used. If the value is not available at that moment or maybe in the future he may be updating whatsoever. In that circumstance, it can be a null value. If the value is either missing or not applicable, in that case also it is null values. Let's say we are joining two tables. 
and the resultant table which is the output of the join operation contains the rows from both the tables let's assume there is one or more field and the values are empty in that case it means join is performed but the value is missing or not applicable in that case we need the importance of having null values coming to the last one remember in sql or sql the structured query language there is a constraint a special type of condition we can enforce to the database table that not null it means if a field is set as not null it is a mandatory field user has to compulsorily give the value for example first name can be a not null field but not the middle name because we can't expect everyone should have a middle name first name and last name may be compulsory another example salary if we enforce not null it means user must compulsorily provide values anyway don't worry about this now we will be talking about this not null constraint elaborately in the coming lectures before we sign out there is an homework activity for you here is the table and this table is the customer table which is populated with certain values and the attributes are id customer id customer name ssn the social security number spouse name phone email you can match ssn like your aadhar number what's the activity just keenly observe this table and note down which field should accept null values and after identifying this post your answers in the comment section and that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed this presentation i'll see you in the next presentation demystifying join operations elaborately i hope the session is informative and thank you for watching